What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And today I'm going to talk about a very popular topic on my channel. It's about moving out, but most importantly, it's about what to do after you've already moved out. Before we get started, I do want to let you guys know I really, really appreciate all the DMs, the emails, the messages, and the comments on this channel asking me questions, asking for guidance for what you should do when moving out. So I'm hoping that these videos really, really help with that. And if you have further questions beyond this, I do have coaching services. You can click the link in the description or up here. And this is actually one of my favorite topics because as I was thinking of the things I wanted to talk about in this video, every single topic that I wanted to hit on today, I was like, man, if I would have did this before I moved out, I would have really been doing good. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, it'll also be up here. Check it out after this if you haven't already. But everything I'm going to talk about today is everything that I wish I would have known or would have thought to do right when I first moved out instead of waiting until way later because it just makes life a lot easier and you will be much more successful by doing these. So the first thing I wanna jump into is plan out the next five years of your life. You may have been asked this question a few times already. What's your five year plan? Especially being that you're at the age you are now about to get ready to move out. So you gotta answer it now. You gotta really think about it. What's your five year plan? I was asked that so many times and it kind of started to annoy me and then I actually sat down and made my five year plan because I got tired of people asking me and not really knowing myself what my five year plan was because all I thought was, well, I'm going to go to school, graduate with a high GPA and get a good job. That's exactly what I did. But beyond that, I really didn't have a plan. And when you don't have a plan, you can got, you can kind of get into this comfortable space where you're like, well, I'm just going to work and I'm just going home. I'm going to work. I'm getting paid. I'm going home and buying what I want on the weekend, doing what I want on the weekend. Then I'm going back home and I'm just chilling and relaxing. And what can happen is that can be cool in that moment. But five years later and you haven't moved from where you're at, you haven't been promoted, you haven't been making more money, you haven't gotten to a place where you want to be financially, and now all of a sudden you start to feel sorry for yourself. So we're gonna avoid that today. So here's how you set up your five-year plan. You first wanna think about things you want to accomplish in the next five years. So think about the salary that you wanna be making in the next five years. Think about where you wanna be living in the next five years. Do you wanna stay where you're at right now? Or do you want to go to a nicer place? Do you want to be married? Do you want to have a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever? Like you have to categorize these things. If you're single right now, what do you want in the future? If you're in a relationship right now, what do you want in the future? Five years from now, do you still want to be girlfriend and boyfriend or do you want to be married? Do you want to be in the best shape of your life in the next five years? You're going to want to think in terms of health, career, money, wealth, spirituality, relationships, not situationships, relationships, physique, exercise, all that stuff. You want to put all that into one bucket and write them all down. Once you write them all down and you understand exactly where you want to be, and this might seem like, like a step that's not necessary, but you'd be surprised at where this, where this could take you. So now you write it down year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And then you can start to write down the things that you're gonna focus on to get there. I don't know too many people who move out, graduate, get a good job and wanna stay in the same exact position for the rest of their life. I don't know anybody who wants to make the same amount of money every single year for the rest of their life. Everyone always wants to make more. So you've gotta push yourself to make more. So let's say your dream salary, maybe you're making 50,000 right now. Maybe your goal is to make 100,000 in the next five years and you can 100% do that. You can even do more if you want to. But you have to set a plan now of how you're gonna do that. So now you have to create habits around doing that. Those habits could be things like, in order to progress in my career, I will one, go to work every single day. That's a pretty good habit to have, right? I'm gonna seek mentorship from people who are already where I wanna be at work. That's another great habit to have. I'm gonna to volunteer to train the new employee. That's another good habit to have. I'm, I'm gonna learn how to interview better. I'm gonna go on YouTube and type in how to interview for whatever the job is that you want. And that doesn't take long to do. Honestly, you could spend like 30 minutes on a Saturday one day, first thing in the morning if you want to, and just 
get into the habit of watching interviews and you start to understand how people should flow and should answer not sound like a robot not sound like it's a completely studied for interview but still sound like you have acceptable answers and you have really well thought out answers without having things scripted out for you, looking like you studied for this thing like a test in school because they're not the same thing and people can see right through that. I'm an employer myself. I can 100% tell when somebody's just scripting out an answer for me and tell me what they think I wanna hear. I don't wanna hear none of that. Anyway, stuff like that is just an example. I'm not gonna go through every single step of how to create a five-year plan. If you want me to make a whole video about creating your five-year plan to put you in the best financial situation and you know the best shape of your life and et cetera, let me know, I'll make a video for it. But for right now, I just want you to focus on understanding that, that in order to create your five-year plan, you need to understand what your goals are, why they are your goals, and what habits you're gonna put in place to get there and then spread it out through five years. And it's not gonna happen overnight, it's not gonna be easy, but at least having a plan, you know where you wanna go. So therefore, whenever you actually decide to look back at your five-year plan, which that's another game changer, look at it at least once a month. I would recommend once a week, just so you know that you're on track with what you're doing, because it's easy to get off track and start doing things that contradict what you wanna do in the future, but you moved out of your parents' house for a reason, man. You moved out of your parents' house for a reason, and you didn't move out to come right back. You didn't move out to lose yourself in the newfound freedom that you have now. So you need to think about, so you need to think about what you wanna do, why you want to do it and then pursue 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 being that this is a younger audience that i'm talking to right now your young days your early 20s your mid 20s even your late 20s need to be dedicated to aiming for something bigger than you aiming for something that you're passionate about something that you can make lucrative it could be your career it could be a side hustle it could be a side business it could be whatever but don't just waste away your life chilling on the couch all day and stuff like that that's i highly recommend against it but anyway i'm about to go on a whole nother tangent so before i do we're going to jump over to the next topic this is actually my favorite one take care of yourself and take care of your place, take care of your environment. This is something that I myself have neglected in the past. And then you, it just gives you perspective. Once you get these things together, you're like, wow, if I would have started doing this two, three years ago, I, I would have been in a much better spot, you know? So I'm gonna break this down for you. You really, really have to think about your priorities and you should be one of the top ones. You know what I mean? Of course, you have God and you have your family and stuff like that, but you really need to think about yourself too. Don't neglect yourself. I used to work all the freaking time. I was so focused on my career, which is important, but I was neglecting my health. I was neglecting eating right. I was neglecting getting the right exercise in. I was burning myself out. I was running myself through the ground unnecessarily at 21, 22, 23 years old. I would come back home dead tired. Sometimes I wouldn't eat at all. I wasn't getting sleep like I was supposed to. I was coming back to a messed up apartment looking like a tornado done hit that thing and it just it, it wasn't right so what i would recommend is take care of yourself you know make sure that one that your place is clean make sure that you actually do your dishes you neglect your dishes if you want to be done seeing mold and stuff crawling up in there and you don't want none of that I'm telling you right now make sure that you get yourself a gym membership stay in shape you don't have to be no bodybuilder or anything like that i definitely wasn't but i was always strong i was always in good shape even when i did neglect exercising as a result of working every single day of the week for 12 plus hours i was still in better shape than people who never touched the gym you know what i'm saying and when i got back to the gym i was even better so what i'm saying is even when you build good habits and you fall off, once you get back to it, that muscle memory is gonna come back quick, which is good. But to never touch a gym, to never see a gym, to never lift a weight, to never run on the treadmill or hit up the Stairmaster, you're doing yourself a disservice because now you're not lifting, you're not building muscle, you're not doing cardio, you're not staying in shape. This stuff is good for you, it's good for your heart, it's good for your mind, it's good for how you can tolerate stress outside of the gym. It's not like something that's just like, yeah, it's the cool trendy thing to do, go to the gym. Like, no, go to the gym for you. Stay in shape, keep your mind sharp, keep your heart healthy, keep your muscles and your whole body really looking good. You know what I mean? And gym memberships are among the most affordable things right now. That's the one thing that I can honestly say that inflation hasn't really, really hit hard. Gym memberships are super affordable. 
so there's really no excuse not to have one. But outside of gym memberships, make sure you have a primary care provider, you know, a doctor, a physician. Make sure you have a dentist. Keep your teeth clean and go see them regularly. See your physician regularly and go see your dentist regularly. Get your blood work checked at least once a year because you might think you're living a good healthy lifestyle but your blood work might say something else and you might need to make some changes and dial back on some things you might think your teeth are healthy but you might have a cavity the whole time you just you never know so i'm just saying take care of yourself and really prioritize these things especially if you got a full-time job and you got insurance and you're not going to the doctor regularly you're not going to the dentist regularly what are you doing? What are you paying for insurance for? You're not even going. Like, you need to go regularly. See, the, the crazy thing is us adults, especially us men, I would say, because this video, if you haven't figured out yet, is mainly for the men out there. As men, we, we're like, ah, oh, nah, I'm, I'm invincible. We, I can shake this off. It's no big deal. It's just a little bit of pain here and there. And I, I know because I've been there, but it's not helpful it's not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. So we have trained ourselves, and perhaps it's a generational thing, but we've trained ourselves to think, I only go to the doctor when I'm worried about something. I only go to the doctor when I'm sick. I only go to the dentist when I have severe tooth pain. You don't wanna have that kind of mindset. That is a very reactive mindset, and as a man, as an adult in general, you have to have a proactive mindset. If you want to succeed, that is, you have to be proactive. You don't wait for your car to break down, or at least I hope not. You don't wait for your car to break down before you go get an oil change. You get those regularly, right? It's the same thing with your body. Eat good food, drink lots and lots of water, get some good exercise in, lift some weights. They don't got to be heavy weights unless you just want them to be but be safe in doing so. Go see a doctor, go see a dentist, get enough sleep. Stuff like that is priceless and underrated. Here's what I would recommend. This is topic number three. I actually dedicated myself to this last year and it was extremely successful, but you don't even have to do it the way I did it. I basically dedicated one month to a new skill. You could dedicate a whole year to a new skill, whatever you want, but I would say choose one thing every single year that you want to get good at it really doesn't matter too much what it is what the reason i'm suggesting this is because you can build good skills that pay you or you can build new hobbies meet new people have more fun in more productive ways and you just become a more well-rounded person and it makes life a lot more purposeful life ain't just about work and what you do for a living Life can very much be about your passions and what you feel your purpose in life is about. And it can also be about having fun in your spare time. Something I've always been passionate about and I love sharpening the skill is martial arts. Right now I'm into Muay Thai. Really, really, really love what I'm doing in Muay Thai right now. There's just something about kicking and punching and kneeing and elbowing people. That, nah, I'm just playing. But it really, it really is fun though. And I think most people in my class can attest to that. But whatever your thing is, if, if you want to learn anything, it could be the boring stuff. It could be like, for me, last year, I wanted to learn how to write a book. I learned how to write a book. Last year, I wanted to learn how to invest in NFTs and cryptocurrency. It's just a skill. I don't really think they're that lucrative, especially right now. It's just personally not my favorite thing, but I still wanted to know how to do it just in case. And I learned a lot of stuff along the way. And that's, it's also a way that you can determine what's for you and what isn't. You might think you're interested in doing something, like maybe you wanna improve, maybe you wanna learn how to play the piano, but then you start playing it and you're like, nah, this ain't for me. I didn't enjoy this like I thought I would. Okay, well now these things are no longer curiosities that you have in your life. A lot of people that I know, they took up stuff like salsa dancing and have a ball doing it, but you see what I'm saying? That's the hobby on the side. It's a good release, it's a good workout, it's a skill, and it's something that can make you a more well-rounded person. Stuff like that excites you about life. There's too, life is too good, in my opinion, to be walking around here feeling like you have no purpose and like you have no hobbies and you have no friends and you have no fun and all you do is work, go home, work. It doesn't have to be all about that. 
Um, another skill, just for example, I can walk you through a bunch of skills that I was interested in and they were curiosities at first. And then one day I woke up and was like, you know what, let's do this. So I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. One time I wanted to make a YouTube channel. I did that. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. I was extremely camera shy. Now I'm coming off just like I do when I talk to my friends. That's what happens when you get those reps in. I used to wanna do Taekwondo and then I did it. I used to wanna do Muay Thai and then I did it. I used to want to get into weightlifting, so I did it. And even though some of these things may not, you might not think of them as being a skill, they're definitely skills. That's why when you lift weights, you have to have a certain form when you do it to do it correctly and get the most out of it and build your muscles in the best way possible. I used to wanna play the drums, I learned how to do that. I was on the drum line, throughout my college career and my high school. Same thing for drawing. I used to really be into that. So I'm just saying as an adult, don't let that part of you die where you have that curiosity and that want to when it comes to certain skills. There's no reason why you can't go out there and take a painting class or learn how to write a book or learn how to start a podcast or a YouTube channel. It can either pay you or maybe it doesn't pay you, but either way, it's not all about money. At the end of the day, it's about having that purpose and enjoying yourself in doing so and becoming more well-rounded. These are things that most adults don't really do because they think they're too busy working and now they come home and that's it and they're tired, but it's all about what you prioritize in life. But anyway, those are the three things that I would recommend. Make those good habits because Honestly, moving out can be chaotic and then you have a world of responsibility at work and then you come back home and you don't know how to manage your finances and stuff like that and you're still learning a bunch of other things and that's how I was. And so like the first skill I learned was how to manage my finances, how to get invested into my 401k, how to invest in general. These were the first things that I started to learn because I did not want to be left behind and I did not want to be ignorant about things that are extremely important to survive and to thrive in life and you shouldn't either but anyway that is the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video